Welcome to Bella Vista Gardening Program. I'm Jerry Horner, and with me today as my guest is Brian Grossnigel. He's coming back, and he is a fellow member of the Bella Vista Garden Club, and he's also the owner of Village Garden and Landscape Company in mm -hmm. Bella Vista. And today we're going to be talking about putting your garden to bed for the winter. So um, we're also be talking about upcoming events and. Um, and then also talking about what you need to do in your garden in November. Just because it's winter doesn't mean we can't, we have to do things out there. We it's have a busy to, time of year. We have to put the garden to bed and get it settled in for the winter. So, yeah, But there aren't very many uh, activities in November for, as far as gardening. Um, you know, just clean up and right. a little bit of pruning here. Now, the Bella Vista Garden Club had its plant sale in, uh, on October 5th, and it, along with the Daylily Club, who disbanded. The remaining plants from that uh, sale are at Village Wastewater, and they're still available to purchase. They, they have, they're there from like nine to three, Monday through Friday. So you can still purchase some of those plants. And that early cool November, day. you can get some plants in. Oh, that that sale day was horrible. It was rainy and and um, kind of cold. cold. And uh, I thought I saw a snowflake, but I guess I was wrong. But Could have been kidding. <laughs> <laughs> But it was just a, a nasty day, but we, we really thank the people that came out and purchased. The Daylily Club did wonderful. They sold like $500 worth oh, of daylilies. Wow. Well, good. So that all goes to scholarships um, through um, Nature's Calling. Yeah. So we had a great day for, um, for the Daylily Club. So we're really happy about that. Um, the other thing is, it's a good time to get your last perennials in and plant trees mm -hmm. before it gets really too cold. And it's a great time to go to Crystal Bridges and Compton Gardens and walk the trails. Uh, the color this year is beautiful. It's absolutely wonderful. November, the early November um, is going to be the peak, the first weekend in November. But it's a little late this year. It is late. In, in you years know past, it's been like uh, with the Arts and Craft Festival. It's right. been known for... To the, the full, full color. And when we first moved to, or bought our lot in Bella Vista, it was <coughs> mid-October mm -hmm. and it was peak color. So it varies, you know, year to year. You never know what it's going to be. I think it's more beautiful now. And I noticed reds and burgundies and golds and oranges. and Just the last few uh, days. Yeah, yeah, it's really you know, just kind of kicked in. End of October. So, but, you know, enjoy that fall color. It's just beautiful this year even. And we didn't have a bad drought this year. That's a good thing. Oh, so that certainly, especially That has August. to help, yeah. Yeah. So, but the trails are going to be beautiful, and, uh, crystal bridges and and Compton Garden Trail. I think Crystal Bridges is having a Halloween party tonight of some kind. Well, they, was a yeah, band they have, it seems like they have activities every day. Yeah. So if you go on their website, you just find all kinds of activities at Crystal Bridges. So anyway, we, we need to talk about putting your garden to bed for the winter. And um, this is usually um, pretty strenuous or, you know, it can be some work. It's a lot of work sometimes. It's not it like spring, but it's kind of the reverse. Well, it's like you have to do it all at one time yeah. so, before that bad freeze comes in. And it takes me a whole day just to start oh, getting imagine. in my little um, bunnies and my flags and my all my garden art mm -hmm. that I put in my shed. So sure. I have a shed I can put them in. But you've got to take your tropical plants in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I usually spray them with insecticidal soap. Yeah, that's a good start. If you bring them in your house, you have to be you'll sure have them all to spray winter. them. And you'll have them all winter, but you have to spray them. One time I found a frog in the pot oh. that I missed. So I've got a house full of, the uh, greenhouses are just plumb full of toads and yeah. frogs. and They love to nestle critters. into those plants in the fall. They dig and down and all you can see is like two little eyes <laughs> poking right. out at you. Right. You take them in the house. That's how I found them, was little eyes looking out <laughs> at me. So, and then huh. uh, you have to lift your... Um, your tropicals, your cannas and dahlias. Some people live their, leave their cannas in the ground. I, I've never um, had a good success rate. I know Branchwood has a lot of cannas. They just and they, the they've ground. always looked good. And yeah. I know uh, up north there's a, a place that uh, Grant and I went by the other day and they had a huge, huge clump of them. Mm -hmm. And I know it gets colder up you know, towards Miller and Mount Vernon than it does here. Mm -hmm. But I know uh, caladiums, um, well, I take my the gladiolas. Yeah. Um, I just put ours in the pot or leave them in the pot and put the pot in the ground and let them grow how they please and then just pick the entire pot That's what up. I do. I put the whole pot in the garage yeah. and um, I just, I don't take them out of the pot. Some people take them out of the pot and then put them in uh, either 
sphagnum moss or you know peat moss or shredded paper you can mm -hmm. store them that way in the winter they have to be dry you know dry them a little bit and put them but I just leave the pot in the, in the garage and take the pot out in the yeah. in the spring and start up. I think it well, slows them down it, a little bit. Yeah, it'll do that, but by pot. forcing the root system, once it's compact and once it can't expand mm -hmm. or get out of that container, it forces the foliage, and yeah. you'll have a much nicer looking plant yeah. um, than if you hadn't. Yeah, and then also you got to get your garden hoses. You, um, yeah, in. yeah, we've been. Uh, the last few days, uh, taking the, the spray nozzle off and unhooking it and letting mm -hmm. them drain right. completely because it will either affect the spigot or it will affect the, the hose itself mm -hmm. or whatever kind of the a spray nozzle. nozzle you have. If it freezes and thaws, just like yeah. with a clay pot, mm -hmm. you get one chance at that. And yeah. if it does, you know, it's, it's done. You may as well just pitch it. Mm -hmm. So you got to get those in. And um, we have a little protectors we put on top of the faucets. They're like a little our like foam box, yeah. a foam box, yeah. and we put that on our faucets just in case. We had, did have one freeze one time, and that's not pleasant to. We have to redo that in this, you know, when it leaks. It out. can be a little expensive. It can be, and then your leaves. You got to get your leaves off the grass. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because that that'll it just makes a mess. And, and kill, if you have a compost heap, you can till that in. If you've got a vegetable garden, mm -hmm. and right now. It's really the end of vegetable garden season, mm -hmm. but you could till the leaves in yeah, and any sort it. of uh, 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 organic compost mm -hmm. um, to till that in and have that ready for spring. But if you do winter peas or, mm -hmm. or cabbage or some of the winter vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, they still benefit from that. Oh, certainly. Mulch yeah. on top. Yeah, it's a natural nutrient. Just And if your leaves, um, if you don't have a shredder, you know, luckily we have a shredder we can use in, in the and shred them and put them in the garden or, you know, <coughs> at least reduce the volume. You can take them to the stump dumps, mm -hmm. but you have to be sure to take your bags with you, you know, just don't don't leave bags of leaves at stump Yeah, dumps. Tom doesn't like the, the bags no. and other debris, and they're not open on the weekends. They used to be open on Saturday and Sunday, but there's too many times these come in. Well, the stump dump down in the west side is open all the time, I oh. think. Okay. Why well, know the one up by us isn't? Because oh, he said they okay. they'd had refrigerators dumped in there, oh, and they'd had right. batteries, and people were using it as a landfill mm -hmm. more than just a stump, stump dump. dump. So he doesn't open on Saturday or Sundays, or if it's rainy and muddy, yeah. um, he doesn't do that either. The city doesn't like him. One out west is on the west side is open almost all the time, mm -hmm. so, and we do see some kind of debris in there. You know, some leftover from buildings. It's terrible, mm -hmm. but it's a nice to have the stump dump to. Oh, certainly to um, you know, get rid of those leaves and, and don't put them in the lakes. If you live on the lake, don't no. put them in the lakes. That just ruins the lake and there's, there's enough natural leaves going into mm -hmm. the lake without blowing more into it and yeah. causing problems. So that, you can't do that. And uh, you can burn your leaves if you call the fire department first and let them know you're well, going to burn, burn ban. and they'll let you know if you can burn, if there's a burn ban or not. So you know, check with the fire department and um, before you even Light the match. Check with them first. Mm -hmm. So, and then you got to remove your spent annuals and your and your weeds. I, I do a little weeding. There's a lot of weeds again this year, even in the fall. Yeah. And uh, but if there's weed, if you're, you can put them in your compost. But if you put your weeds in the compost, I do the annuals, but not the weeds, because that's just gonna. Well, if your compost doesn't get hot enough to kill those seeds, you're gonna have yeah. weeds in your compost. So, and a lot of. Um, a lot of the backyard compost doesn't get warm and hot enough, like the mm -hmm. Bentonville compost. That gets really hot. Yeah, and once you distribute it, you're going to be s spreading the weeds, weeds throughout mm -hmm. wherever you put we it. We don't need any more weeds. That'll so. just be a nuisance come spring. And the other thing, um, you need to kind of evaluate what you what happened this year and what went right and what went wrong, and you know, check just to an overview of your garden, just to see mm -hmm. what you want to change for the next year. Maybe make some notes, you know, or. I forget from one year to the next what I remembered last year, and yeah. so I make some notes and what I want to move or. I think or altogether this this past spring, and summer, and now the fall, has been uh, almost picture perfect as far as we've not had a drought, we've not mm -hmm. had uh, excessive heat. I don't know that it hit a hundred. The only thing we had was excessive water in, in well, August. Well, yeah, August that we had bad. seven inches lived, on one day. Yeah. And that yeah. flooding that uh, the golf course has sustained it's was horrible. unbelievable. Yeah, I've been here 30 years and I've never seen anything like it. No, it's just awful. It's amazing what water can do. Mm -hmm. Or lack of water. Yeah, now, last trees, year we had that. And then this year we're yeah. 
um, at a benefit. And the trees with those droughts, um, you have to be careful. Some of those trees that are dead are leaning, you know, on the roadway. So I'm, I'm afraid they're going to be coming down onto the roadway. I've noticed a lot of dogwoods have struggled. Yes, I've lost. And there's a lot of them that didn't leaf out and didn't. Um, I lost three dogwoods yeah. this year just because of that drought for two years. So yeah. it's really hard on them. Um, the other thing on um, um, tools, we talked about you know, mm -hmm. earlier about tools, um, getting your tools ready for the spring. If they're, you know, the least bit soiled or whatever, they should be cleaned. I have, this is a new tool that I just got this year, and, and I haven't used it much, but it does have a little residue on it, so it does need just to be cleaned, um, you know, maybe a little soap and water wipe it down and then oil it. And this is a, fris is it Friska? Fiskers. Fiskers. Yeah. This is one um, that you said they guarantee for life, they right? They have the absolute best warranty of any uh, company I've ever dealt with. And if a little part goes wrong or a little nick or a little anything, um, I just took a, a picture and emailed it to them. And within two or three days, I had a brand new pair. Same with the, the pruners, the, the lock mm -hmm. uh, came undone, and I sent it that, and the lopers, one of the handles became loose, and two, three days later, there was a brand new pair that they overnighted, and uh, I highly recommend them. Can't they're beat that. They're a very customer-friendly company. And they're really good instruments. I, I love my loppers and, and all. But so as far as cleaning goes, you can mm -hmm. see this side, I don't know if you can, which camera, okay. this one. Uh, this side has been cleaned and I just used vegetable oil and a paper towel and this side hasn't but um, they're very easy to clean and, and really it helps you know come next spring they'll be ready um, to go yeah you have brand new new pair of tools mm -hmm. and they'll be ready to go works so. out good anyway okay um would we um we would also need to I'll talk about um, the water features. Now, I don't have a water feature in my garden. Um, I got a space reserve for it, but I haven't talked my husband into it yet. But I, I, um, I just don't have a water feature. But I know you have to do some winterizing of the water features, too, and the, the irrigation systems. Yeah, if you have irrigation, the most important part is to get the uh, backflow preventer uh, disassembled and then tape the two ends uh, that come from the water source to um, your irrigation or water feature. Mm -hmm. If the backflow preventer freezes, it will more than likely crack and they're, they're generally made of brass and they're about oh. $450. So the brass will crack even? If it gets cold enough. Wow. If it gets ice inside, uh, you've got to drain, drain your irrigation line mm -hmm. or leave, uh, if you have a pond or a waterfall or something like that, you need to leave the water running uh, the entire winter because the there. still water is what will invite or what will create uh, the freeze, the freeze. Mm -hmm. and um, it can destroy the the liner it can if you had masoned in or if it's concreted in mm -hmm. uh, it's just like a clay pot you want to bring those in because they'll absorb right. the moisture if it rains or snows and then they'll yeah. freeze and thaw and you'll have nothing but broken concrete or broken uh, terracotta. Right. I know you have to um, be sure to get your bird baths empty. Mm -hmm. Even the large just concrete, turn them upside down and I, we cover turn them. ours over or lean them. But even the large, we had a large concrete bird bath, and we didn't, you know, we thought it would be okay for the winter, and it cracked because mm. it was a really cold winter. But um, it doesn't take much for that water just to seep in those nope. little tiny hairline cracks, and then it just explodes them mm -hmm. when it freezes. So, and they do have, um, they also have. Um, Heaters, you can have your water heated for the birds over the winter. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, there's one uh, site I saw that you could put like a heating pad mm -hmm. under a, maybe a plastic bowl or plastic dish for the, the birds to have water over the winter. And then you just turn it on when it gets cold. And if it's nice during the day, up to 40, 50, you don't have to have it on. But you can just flip it on, you know, when you have a a cold spell to keep that water from freezing and from the container I've seen that crack. for dogs and cats as well. Mm -hmm. And they, they have others you can purchase, you know, designed just for that type of, you know, um, water feature for birds and sure. so forth. And you've got to feed your birds over the winter. Well, That's we the other drink thing. and they do. Yeah. I mean, they have so to. So the 
they're very, very hungry when it's cold because yeah. they get their protein and that's what keeps them warm. So be sure and keep your bird feeders filled over the winter and they love the suet in the winter. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a couple suet, I think we have a suet recipe on the Bella Vista Garden Club website. It's peanut butter and lard and bacon grease yeah, or something in there. Yeah, well, and then I use oatmeal and I use yeah. dried fruit if I have any left over, maybe some cereal, mm -hmm. um, you know, remains in a, in a cereal uh, box or whatever, you know, you can mix in there to get the right consistency. So um, it's always a, a great thing to have that suet for the birds in the winter. And do you feed birds up at the... At the um, oh, we've got dozens. we got bluebirds, cardinals, yeah. jays. And you have feeders out all oh, the yeah. time? Yeah, I've yeah. got one, a great big one, uh, towards the office where my desk looks right at it. Mm -hmm. and, oh, there's some days that we got 20 and 30 oh, wow. that are just clamoring for but whatever they can get to. If you don't have birds in your garden, you got more. You might have more insect problems because the birds yeah. take care of the bad insects for you too. So you, yeah. know, you feed them and then they help you too. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good trade-off. As long as they leave the know. ladybugs alone because that's yeah. a, a most beneficial yeah, it insect They're to one. have. And we had a lot of them this year. Yeah. We had a lot of ladybugs this I year. I didn't notice as many butterflies though. No. Um, Lou Jasper, our butterfly expert, said that the butterflies haven't been uh, as as, you I know, know numerous. Care to return or? I don't know if it's the drought the past two years. They really weren't sure. I had I had rescued a few of the um, caterpillars off my parsley mm -hmm. and took them to Lou because she's got the butterfly houses and oh, yeah. she protects them from the birds eating them. And so uh, I did get a couple off of the parsley that I took over to her. And she, I know she rescues whatever she sees, the eggs and yeah. and uh, caterpillars. So she'll. She'll uh, feed them in her little butterfly house and then release them. So she's our kind of our butterfly queen. You well, know. good. But she note she did notice there weren't nearly as many butterflies last this year, year. Even with the drought, it seemed like yeah. there were some days that like a butterfly bush or mm -hmm. just different just flowering covered. shrubs they were just covered. But this year I didn't I didn't no. notice. Uh, I don't know if that's going. To, hopefully it won't be a trend. And my and my hummingbirds too. I've I didn't been see very many hummingbirds this year. Less in number. I used to have like 60 or 70. Wow. On the, my two feeders, I'd have to fill them usually twice a day. Hmm. In the past few years, I've only had like five or six or maybe 10 at the most. So hmm. I don't know where the hum hummers are going either. So they're just well, kind of. unfortunate. Yeah. So, okay. And I don't know what else we need to talk about to put the garden to bed. I think we've just about covered everything about the garden. Um, so. Other than lawns, uh, oh, the lawns. Give, give them a last scalping or give them a mm -hmm. last. Uh, generally speaking, uh, it's said that you don't want to apply nitrogen to a lawn after November 1st, which mm -hmm. will be the day after tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, it burns it. Um, ironite is an absolutely wonderful product. Uh, it is a slow release, it's just iron basically pellets. Mm -hmm. Another. Uh, and you carry that? Yes. Uh, another good product is Melorganite. Oh, yeah. It is a brewery uh, residue, I guess you'd say, Lots from of sludge. Milwaukee. Yeah. And it's the only form uh, of phosphate, a natural form of phosphate, mm -hmm. because the, the, the APA or whatever group that is has banned that. And so all uh, chemicals, all fertilizers, mm -hmm. phosphate has been required to be removed from. Mm -hmm. But uh, Melorganite is the only natural source of phosphate. It's a little stinky at first, but it's also a deer repellent. Yes, right. And yeah. the deer absolutely hate the smell of it, and you'll mm -hmm. hate the smell of it the at day first, you put it yeah. down. But within a day or two, once mm -hmm. it once it waters in, and it is kind of a time released. Uh, I prefer it over the uh, the ironite. The ironite will give you almost an immediate kind of an emerald green on your lawn, mm -hmm. but it's uh, beneficial again for your plants, your shrubs, uh, really anything that you apply it to, and you use just a wee amount, just mm -hmm. maybe a tablespoon, and just put it around the the plant itself and let it dissolve down into it, mm. and you could probably get a good three months dose out of just a small amount really? that you put in, because yeah. it, it'll dissolve slowly mm -hmm. as the water uh, Well, we were on a, um, a garden tour for the Master Gardeners uh, last year, and one of the gardeners had a um, in her garden, she had little containers in the back of the beds with melargonite that were, it was wet. She would wet the melargonite and it did smell, mm -hmm. you know, it didn't, it didn't. I mean, you could tell what it was. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that bad, but um, you it's could. It's got a scent to it. It kept all the deer away from yeah, her. Yeah, and we probably have a hundred 
that mm -hmm. live directly across mm -hmm. the street from uh, where the nursery is, mm -hmm. and uh, I can tell they'll they'll come headed our way and, and they just they split. smell it <laughs> and I don't know if yeah. it's the Emerson the garden cat that they're afraid of for the night, but one of the two does it. <laughs> well. You know, we got to do what we can to keep the the deer out of our gardens. You know, there's enough. There should be enough in the woods for the for the Holy de thing. for the deer to eat. Although we do have an op overpopulation of deer. I think there's more and more. I mean, uh, I, mean yeah. I saw eight or nine this morning, and if you see one, you're going to see two or three. Right. And, uh, there was two or three times coming up Trafalgar today that uh, several were, you know, just okay. darting yeah. across the street, and yeah. they don't seem the least bit yeah. uh, afraid of. No, it seems People like they're more. coming in herds, you know, um, that um, instead of having one or two, I get four and five at a time, you know, and it's, it's just unbelievable how they've, uh, they've expanded in the village. But um, there isn't any hunting allowed in the village other than bow hunting, so I think that's one of the situations yeah. where, you know, they're just not allowed to hunt because of the safety issue with hunting. Well, we don't need people firing guns no, and shooting arrows. No, when but I wish there was some way that we could, you know, kind of control the deer a little bit. and Maybe more bow hunters could go out and, yeah. and, uh, and uh, hunt, you know, the, get them hunted. And Why not? Produce. They sure like the hostas. Oh, they love the hostas. That's a like, gourmet treat. Yep. But I did have last year on my back bed, I have hostas on one side and I had hydrangeas on the other and they ate the hydrangeas to the ground, didn't touch the hostas. Hmm. So maybe their tastes have changed, I don't know. But they, I know they, they love the hydrangeas, they oh, eat them yeah. to the ground. So, Well, the other things on the, in the garden for, um, for the year, the, the annuals and herbs are just about gone. So, you know, there's a few that are, that'll linger on. Mm -hmm. And we had a contest one time at the uh, Master Gardeners, I saw a, uh, I had a little calendar you flip, you know, and it was on November 1st, this woman up east in, in Connecticut or something, she um, <clears throat> went out and made a list of all the plants that were still blooming on November 1st. Hmm. Well, you wouldn't think about plants blooming at that time, and no. she made this list. Well, I thought that was interesting, so I went out and made my list, and I couldn't believe how many things I still had blooming on November 1st, so we made a contest out of it the next year at Master Gardeners. Oh. And it was amazing how many things, you know, other than the mums and that we still had some of the annuals still blooming and some of the perennials reblooming. And, you know, sometimes your, I, I, I mean, your, uh, your um, spring bloom, your azaleas, yeah, my I've forsythia, azalea right now. and my forsythia right now has blooms on it, little tiny blooms. So it's amazing what blooms on, on I think on our forsythia is uh, the ones I have up at the corner um, some little they color. were blooming in November last year, yeah. and we still have uh, an encore azalea that yeah. is just uh, just full and of those you expect, blooms. but there's a lot of them you don't expect, so yeah. it's, it's amazing what will bloom. But your your uh, herbs usually will be gone. So yeah, they tend to fade. They're gone. Um, and the mums are still showing up. I've seen color. a lot, uh, uh, especially people on Facebook that have put uh, pictures up of mm -hmm. theirs, mm -hmm. and uh, there's really a lot of color left. I don't know if it's just not been warm enough or not gotten cold enough to it affect them. Yeah. Uh, well, we haven't had a, we haven't had a hard, hard freeze. We almost had a frost. The other morning I noticed frost yeah. on the roofs, yeah. but I didn't notice any of the plants at... Mid-October, but I don't think we've had that real severe mm -hmm. frost, winter frost. Um, the other thing on your trading, you know, treating your, um, your perennials mm -hmm. and cutting them, um, you have to be sure not to trim your salvia. Mm -hmm. uh, we found out this uh, like last year. Um, when you trim your salvia, it has a hollow, um, it has a hollow stem. It's almost like a straw. Like a straw. And if water gets in there and <coughs> freezes, that's what kills your plant. Mm -hmm. So um, leave your salvias till spring. Don't cut your salvia. I've really found that and most of ours are in a, a greenhouse. It's mm -hmm. one's heated and one's not. But even the radiational effect in greenhouse too. Um, I've had roses in bloom in February. Mm -hmm. I've had other uh, perennials, mm -hmm. um, but I, I really think that you're better off almost not pruning back a lot mm -hmm. of things until spring, until you see some new yeah. growth come up. And see, I don't usually trim much in the fall. I, I leave it, you know, sometimes they'll have seeds on it for the birds yeah. or something, and I'm not a big trimmer unless it's, it's really going to be um, a problem with the wind blowing it or something. So, yeah. Like the roses, I'll trim those down. My hybrid teas, if they're like 
six foot tall. I'll trim those a little so they don't mm -hmm. rock in the wind. Now I saw a real neat idea and they uh, took a, like a tomato cage or a wire mm -hmm. cage and they put that cage over the rose itself right. and then they just filled it full of leaves mm -hmm. and mulch and it kind of insulated it. That's what I do for um, my hybrid tubes. I've not tubes. tried it. But yeah. Well, I, you, well, I have circles of uh, uh, chicken wire. Mm -hmm. I have made chicken wire circles and I just put them over and then put the, the mm -hmm. leaves in. It really does help. Yeah, keep some they can be a little sensitive too. to the cold. Yeah, if it's have a really bad winter. Yeah. So, and um, like I said, the lawns you gotta make sure that you keep them about two inches, mm -hmm. cut two inches, and then you know. Let them go to sleep. Let them go I to mean, sleep. fescue is gonna stay green. Yeah. Bermuda, of course, probably within the next week or two. It'll once we get uh, down to 28, if it's there, if it's 28 for about four hours, mm -hmm. that's gonna put them to sleep. Yeah, and once they're asleep, you know, you yeah. don't mess with them until yeah. May and. Right. Just let them do their thing. So, well, the main thing to do, I guess, in the fall is just enjoy these beautiful fall colors and go out on the deck or the porch and, and a little hot cider or a little cup of hot tea in the winter, hot chocolate, you know, and just enjoy the, the watching the birds and the animals. They're getting ready for winter, too. They're, yeah. they're burying their nuts. <laughs> I mean, I've got little holes everywhere. They're burying their the nuts. The swirls have been busy this year. They've been very busy. And... Uh, if you have any other questions about gardening in November, you got the website for the uh, Master Gardener. Mm -hmm. Master Gardener website is bentoncountygardening.org, and there's a lot of information. You can do a lot of searching over the winter, uh, getting ready for spring. And the Master Gardener has uh, gardeners closed their hotline for the year. That's closed for the year. It'll be open again in the spring, and that's where you can call in and get, um, uh, you know, information. Mm -hmm. If you have a question or a problem and they can help you, they send you materials and, and uh, you know, they'll kind of analyze your problem. Or feel free to call up the nursery. I mean, we're there seven days yeah, a week. You're always very helpful, too. Yeah. And for the more information on the Bella Vista Garden Club, uh, you can call um, or you can uh, go to their website. is Bella Vista Gardening, bellavistagardenclub.com. And uh, we've got a lot of information on that website, It's a wonderful too. website. It's a great website. Very, it's very easy informative. easy to navigate. Um, we've had a lot of good comments about it, and uh, then the next garden club meeting won't be until January. We kind of take off for the winter now, and um, our next meeting will be uh, in January. So, we well, can, we've got the Bentonville uh, luncheon. Right, the Bentonville, the Bentonville club. Garden Club is having their um, their Christmas bazaar and luncheon, and that's the first uh, the Monday before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the exact date, but that's 25th. the twenty fifth. The twenty fifth. And ours is December sixth, is it not? Well, we have our, Thursday, yeah, December our luncheon 6th. is on the 4th, the 4th, the Wednesday, the 4th yeah. of December. But Bentonville Garden Club has their um, great um, uh, luncheon and, and they you know, have auctions and it's their big fundraiser. And P. Allen Smith will be there mm -hmm. and uh, I think he'll probably have some books there to sign and sell. And he's going to be their speaker. And it's, it's a great uh, time. I'm sure to going. that you can just maybe Google Bentonville Garden Club and they may have a website or I believe it's you know, at the Embassy Suite. It's at Embassy Suite. Well, the Master Gardens show was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At Embassy Suites. Nice luncheon <coughs> and you see a lot of uh, people from all over the area and actually some of the Garden Club members come from Dardanelle and wow. and down. Is that far know, away? Yeah. Dardanelle wow. and, and Russellville they come up hmm. and, and it, it's a it's a great little uh, I'm luncheon. looking forward to it. Yeah. So thank you for joining me well, you're today. Welcome. It's always fun to have uh, have you on, and you always have, share such great information for gardeners. Well, I do my best. So, and you do. And I hope you've enjoyed the show, and until next month, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. That's right.